everybody. Welcome. Here we go. It's that time again. Happy Monday. Matt Connerton unleashed and we are live. I forgot to turn off the little uh, fan here. I don't know if the mic picks it up or not, but we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious hot, hot downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on Comcast 97 if you're in Manchester. Streaming at WMNHradio.org and on the Facebook on the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page. And of course, you can go to my website, mattconnerton.com for all of your live streaming options, social media links, contact info, show archives, etc. And hello to our friends at Raw Talk Online. Today is Monday, July 26, 2021, and I'm not alone. Jenny is here. I am here. I am present. Yes. I am, I am here. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. I'm well, playing with my rose pen that lights up. Whoa, and you got uh, you got papers in front of you. What are you doing? Uh, what are you doing? An entertainment report? No, I'm oh. I'm getting ripped off more, I feel like, for, my, uh, for well, medical we'll, reasons. We'll, we'll, if I didn't pay enough. Yes. Oh boy, let me tell you the story later on. Well, we'll get to that. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, It's the beginning of a new week here on the show. And I do want to remind you all that we are proudly sponsored by the Hopknot here at WMNH, right across the street at 1000 Elm Street in the Brady Sullivan. Please do not go there today, however, because Monday and Tuesday is their weekend. But they are open Wednesday through Sunday. They have delicious gourmet pretzels. They have craft beer, a large assortment of them. All kinds of great stuff going on. Grant Lampton performs there live every Friday night from 7 to 9 p.m. They have Sunday brunch. They have that uh, Gender Blender event, which I, I I don't have it in front of me. I keep forgetting to pull that up, but I think that's a recurring thing, right? The, ge- the it- Gender Blender? I'm not sure. Uh, I got to be honest with you. I've been out of touch for the last week, so I'm yes. kind of in the dark here. Yes. Sorry. But uh, please, uh, the Hop Knot, it's, it, it's a wonderful place, and we Absolutely. have our uh, first call of the week on the show. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Uh, it's easy D, and boy, am I fired up. You're all oh, fired up. Oh, I got onto your Yeah, goat. it happened today. The uh, Taking the bus, you know, recently I had 99% of the time I had no problems. Right, right. So I, I had like a, I had like a vision earlier, and when I was on the bus, I said, I saw like the vines of the branches. I said, there's gonna be a problem here. What do you mean? So what do you mean we, you had we a got off, we got off the, we got onto the bus, right? We, from the market, ba- no, from market, but from the. Uh, I don't understand. From the, uh, Walmart, yeah, I'm Walmart already to the mall. I'm already and confused. This guy comes on. He was complaining about He's downtown, on the bus. everything in Manchester. I'm not gonna go into it, but I felt great. And he had this walker, and he had uh, two big bags of stuff, and he had this. This um, heavy table, you know, you, you put it there for you, like a, um, you know, for food in front of the TV there, one of those uh, uh, wood tables there. Probably weighed like 10, 15 pounds. So there he was wobbling that onto the bus, and he was blocking the whole aisle. Now, you're supposed oh. to take your car and take the stuff out, uh-huh. and you're supposed to not block the aisles. Right. So a few minutes goes by, and I told him nicely, I said, hey, I, I, I'm going to have to go buy one of my walker to get to the mall. So, oh, yeah, don't worry, I'll take care of it. So I was trying to get, get to the mall, and, and there he was blocking the aisle. Uh-huh. Did you punch him out? And so he tried to pick that thing up and put it in the, in the side, and, and, and he was having trouble. And he said, oh, can't you just scoot by? It was like two inches. <laughs> With a walker. I said, I, I can't make it by. Uh, and then yeah. he, I said, if that walker, if that, all that stuff you have falls on me, we're going to have some problems. <laughs> they said, oh, shut up. Whoa. Oh, my God. Did yeah. you get into fisticuffs? And then he finally oh. got that thing up there, and, and, and then I was scooped by, and I finally got out of there, and I was so mad that I called up the MTA and I complained. Why didn't the uh, driver I, of the, why didn't the yeah, bus driver the drive- uh, stand in there? They're supposed to look anything. out for people who are disabled. Yeah. The drivers are supposed so to make her, sure I said, disabled I those, folks uh, can get those, on and uh, Walkers should be blocking the aisle, and the, and the lady, the uh, MTA said, you're right. Now, Easy G, I, have I, a, said, I don't go on the bus to get yelled at by another customer. No, no, you don't. You didn't deserve it. I have a question, though. I, I think it's probably reasonable to assume while this was occurring, you were not wearing one of your muscle shirts, correct? I was. You <gasps> were? Did you try flexing? Yeah, did you flex? Did I know it's an older guy, probably down on his luck, but the, I can't be, can't be blocking the aisle. And, it was, and then when I came jerky. home, there was a lady with one of those carts that I have, you know, the grocery cart. 
and she had it in the middle of the aisle too. But at least you were able to get by. She 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 was nice, but this guy this guy here, oh goodness. No. Wouldn't it have been great if everybody else on the bus just got up and helped lift the one man's package out of the way and just kind of lift it easy? Well, somebody out was going to help him, but he was just so angry. I was all myself. Mm. But I had a feeling that thing was going to fall on my leg. I said, that thing falls on, on me. We're going to have some problems. Which I, you know, in all in seriousness, that that's a re- very big deal to you, Easy. And I don't doubt in any way, shape, or form that that was super Yeah, I can see with that, all this stuff falling on lot. that, you know, the big heart, heavy uh, thing that you set up and you watch TV, TV with a cart. All I could see was that falling on my leg. Like, oh, my God. You know what I would have said and then to then he told me to move the first time. It was like two inches. How are we going to move in a two inches? You know what I would have said? So I, I finally w- got out of there. It was like maybe... <laughs> Seven inches, and I probably scooted by there. I would have said, uh, you don't want that falling on my leg. I'm a real New Yorker. That's what I would have said to him. I know the oh truth. My God, I was, I was no, so he mad. didn't say he's a real Manchesterian. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't but... think I was thinking because it, it, when the people got onto the stop here, what if it was more than easy. it was only one person coming? What if it was three or four people, and he had the aisle blocked? For like I told the lady reason, on the MTA, so what if it was a fire? This world these Granted, days. we could have gone out the other door, but still. Yeah, you're not supposed to get relegated to a back door because you're disabled. You're supposed to be able to get on and off the bus respectfully. Right. This guy was blocking the whole aisle. Like the lady said on the MTA bus, she, I mean, a years of the phone, she said, you're right, that's not, that's not proper. <laughs> now, uh, Dirk Don uh, from Arrogant Media in the chat room says, Easy could have dragged that person out and made them bite the curb. Oh, yeah, the only bus driver I said was the, you know, the, the guy with all the heavy, heavy stuff and the two big bags of merchandise from Walmart. Had to get off the bus so I could get off. How stupid is that now? He, he bring all the stuff off the bus, and then I, uh, I could get off the bus, and then we had to come back on the bus. That, that was stupid. Mm-hmm. Now, you said something earlier, though, about I, – I, I'm still confused about it, though. You you, uh, you started your story. You said something about vines and branches, and I'm, I'm – And visions. Yeah, just an old joke yes. from, uh, from the old prayer group stepping stones where this guy gave a talk one time. And he says, I saw the vines and the branches. He had like a vision. Oh, oh. Oh, see, I thought you saw like Mother Mary or something. I that guy years ago. You said vision with vines. I thought Mother Mary. So this is... Uh, yeah, that was around. the way the game is talking. He said, I saw some vines and some branches. I said, oh, great. Here we go. I see. So you opened your <laughs> anecdote with a reference that no one else could have possibly understood. All right. <laughs> but I had a feeling that something about that was going to happen. You know, the... Uh, <laughs> The norm, the psychic. I don't know if he would have, he would have predicted this, but uh, I just had a bad feeling. You know, the guy was in a bad mood. He was complaining about everything in town. I'm not going to go into it. You know, knowing Norm, you know, talk about uh, local local politics here yeah, on the uh, no. afternoon show. But he was just complaining about this and that. I said, mm-hmm. "Oh, great, here we go." Oh, he here we that, go. Like I said, he had that walker. He had two big bags. He had that 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 uh, that, that setup table that you watch. You know. You play. Uh, I mean, put food on there and you watch television. You know. No, I would have. Uh... He, he had too much stuff with him. I would have said, hey, do you know who I am? You should have played that card. He should have taken a cab. Yes. Ooh. He could have put all the stuff in the back, and the cab driver could have gone right to his door. You know, sometimes you just have too much right stuff with you. Door. You hear him? Violent. It was hot out, you know, and the guy was in a bad mood. and Mm-hmm. And put you in a bad mood. Had you seen the Mother yeah. Mary? Mm-hmm. We're you know, you know me, I hate to complain, but this time it was, it was time to complain. Do you hate to complain? I'm not sure about that. But, uh, <laughs> well, but... I hate to, but this time I had to. <laughs> time, I understand. Well, was another time I, 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 drove the, I, yeah, I drove the bus. I was going, headed to a, I to coming back with an appointment, and the bus driver stopped. And, and a white, I never seen this happen before. She stopped, uh-huh. and she went outside and took like a five-minute break and smoked cigarette, a cigarette. And all the doors opened, all the smoke came onto the bus. What? Yeah, the so, so we did left that the whole, here in the whole bus It smelled like a cigarette butt. So I, I called and complained about that because that's ridiculous. Seriously? I, I never seen anything like it. The bus driver stopped and took a five minute uh, cigarette break. <laughs> oh, we got waiting on the bus. Wait, wait, wait. Did huh. that happen here in the city, here in Manchester? It did. The bus driver literally pulled the bus over, gets out to have a bud. Yeah, the, the door was open, and then when she came back, it smelled like a cigarette butt. Well, yeah, he, gross. He didn't say to have a bud. And the, and the lady answered but, the phone said, you should be but, doing that. Yeah. B-U-T-T. But. Not, not, not but uh, cannabis. No, not bud. And then but, it was another time right. where I drove by, uh, and I took the bus and stopped and stopped all the way to downtown. You don't like to And the guy the, went down Valley Street, it was like 100 miles an hour. 100 miles an hour down, down Valley, Valley Street. Street? Well, literally, not, not really that fast, but he was going oh. fast. So I yeah. called and complained about that. I said, hey, the guy was going too fast. Wow. Where were you going over the 30-mile limit in the city? That bus went down Valley Street all the way down to the St. Mary's Bank like in two seconds. Two seconds? Wow, you were flying. 
That's amazing. Yeah, we're coming back, we're coming back from the uh, mall today, and the, the bus driver. I didn't complain about this one, but oh, it was kind of funny. He went through a red light. But now, oh, really? No, that's okay. Well, that's uh, par- that's okay. That's par for the course here in Manchester. I've never lived anywhere right. where traffic lights were considered quite so. I think o- optional. Well, it's funny that before this incident happened at the mall with this old fella, I had a feeling it's like bad was going to happen. Mm-hmm. You had uh, visions of vines and branches. And the mother right, because he had too much stuff with him. Mm-hmm. So let that be a lesson that people take on the bus. Don't bring, don't bring everything on the bus and well, then what do you try to block only, the aisles. Yeah, but yeah, but how are you going to get it there? You, you, the, you, if you go go to the store and get your stuff, and then take a cab home. No, I like taking a. The guy just had too much stuff. Listen to you. Take a cab home. You got money on the tree there, huh? Well, it's not so much. It sounds to me, it's not so much that he had too much stuff. It's just that he could have been more considerate with the placement of it and not just left it in everyone's yeah, he's, way. Yeah, that's supposed to block the aisles. Right, exactly. Which is just common sense and common courtesy. Thinking, uh, uh, people oh. come out from the bus at uh, uh, the bus stop at the mall. Then they could have made a couple of other stops on uh, the way to the uh, back to uh, uh, downtown. Mm-hmm. And he, he was blocking the aisle. How would people go back and forth? Mm-hmm. And the, the, the thing that got me riled up was he told me to shut up. Yeah. Well, that's not nice. He clearly, and you had you had your muscle shirt on and everything. He was uh, playing with fire. Yeah. I just couldn't uh, wait to get off the bus. I said, I got it. You could have just taken one minute to get off the bus. It took like five minutes. Mm-hmm. I said to myself, the, uh, like I told him, I said, hey, that, that, that all your stuff better not fall on my leg. <laughs> <laughs> what, what if, my, my dumb luck, you know? What if what if only uh, some of it had fallen on your leg? How would that have been? Oh, would, there was, still would have been some, some issues. Yes, yes, just not if as I many. If I get injured, he went. He went. Yeah, we been don't a, want to see easy laid back up. Yeah, yeah. You've been doing so well. We don't want to see you injured. How's your rib? Yeah. Cra- crazy way to start the week. <laughs> it sure is. I hear you, bro. I hear like I say, ninety nine percent of the Dude. time there's no issues on the bus. I think the bus all the time, you know. Right, right. Well, that's a, a pretty today good. Today it was it was awful. Yeah, today. but if you have a lot of stuff and you got somewhere to go, you what are you supposed to do? Have two bus trips? Like, how do you do that? You have to bring your stuff. Mm-hmm. And well, you, you, know, can get, you can get uh, some stuff. But you just you got to you got you to close up that walker and put it in between the seat there, and then. Pile your stuff on the seat, or just, or, or just get a friend to bring, to bring you to Walmart next time. We're gonna get so much stuff. Right. Well, that was my point. The issue isn't I mean, the, the, uh... the bus is good, but it's not good for a lot of packages and, and but if uh, that's your heavy means stuff. Of travel, you know? That's your means of travel. I know the bus can tend to be cheap, but cup. there's a limit how much you can stack on the bus, and then you can take it all off the bus. And I feel like he's making more work for himself than it, than it needed to be. Mm, they call that a Litherman's load, huh? Mm-hmm. So, so that, that that's sounds, my uh, that sounds venting wrong. for the day, and you guys have a great show. All right, <laughs> th- thanks, Easy G, and we'll see you. Uh, <laughs> we'll we'll see you on he's, the typical Easy hang, hang up there. He's not going to see you anywhere, when Maddie. He, when he's done, he's done. Well, he's uh, coming in Thursday for his entertainment report, of course. Perhaps he'll have more complaints uh, at that time. Well, but he doesn't complain. But he, he well, he hates to complain. He hates to complain. He hates to complain. Wow. Well, complain. My goodness. Well, that opens up a line for you. <laughs> Uh, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. You can also text us at 617-917-4476. Tweet me at Matt Connerton or send an email to Matt at MattConnerton.com. And, of course, you can always interact and opine in the Facebook live chat, and we will do that. Uh, we'll say hello to everybody in the uh, Facebook in just a moment. But the best thing to do so that we can hear and enjoy your dulcet tones is to give us a call at 603-250-6007. And uh, a lot of great comments already in the chat room, so we will say hello to everybody in there. Uh, Mike Palapita, who is a top fan, first one in from Queen City Cabinetry in the historic Sunbeam Mall, one of our great sponsors here at WMNH 95.3. Hello, Mike. Uh, Texas Mike is in the chat room, and uh, Mikey says he's with Scott Perry on their way to a Red Sox game in Boston. and. uh, Easy? No, Texas Mike. He's with Scott Perry. Scott, of course, the host of the Courtesy Call podcast, and a new episode of that goes up every uh, every Sunday online. A great political podcast. Mikey's a man about town, man. He gets he around. He does. Red yes. Sox game now. 
Uh, Dan Levasseur in the chat room says, breathe in that smoke. Happy Monday, y'all. Yeah, it's a little hazy outside. Oh, Apparently, uh, we're getting all the smoke from the West Coast. You know, it travels along the jet stream, and then uh, we get to see it in our skies. That's how I can't, That's how much they're burning. I can't remember the last time we heard there wasn't fire. Like, this oh, wasn't an always thing, but I can't, in the last umpteen years, when was the last time we had a year they didn't <clears> have it? Well, yeah, it happens every summer, but every year it seems to get worse. But in the last few years, though, it's just been constant. Uh, I'll tell you what, if only they had taken Trump's advice and just uh, raked their uh, forest. Sweep their lawns. That's right. That's right. Uh, Wayne Noel (laughs) is a top fan all the way from Michigan and says, Afternoon, Matt, and everyone out here. Uh, Dirk Don, I think I mentioned, from Arrogant Media is in the Facebook live chat. Uh, Dirk says, uh, I wish I worked in radio. I have the face for it. Matt doesn't, so that's why he streams. Well, you know, I, I hate to brag, but I was uh, uh, People Magazine's uh, sexiest man alive in uh, 2005. I don't, I don't know if uh, I don't know if you knew that. Um, Can I see it? Uh, yeah, just Google it. It's uh, not nah, just don't even bother. Just trust me. Uh, Are you naked? No, uh, no. How dare you? It's People Magazine. My goodness. So what? Uh, Scott Robinson is in the chat and says, uh, "Easy was blushing very badly this morning." Yes. Well, this morning on the morning show, and I didn't get to hear all of it yet. I'm gonna have to go back and check it out. But Easy G was on the morning show, and also Veronette March was on the morning show, and the subject of uh, you know. Uh, as we all know, EZG had once uh, been interested, had some amorous feelings for Veronette, and had asked her out, I guess. And then uh, she changed her name and left town. <laughs> so that was uh, brought up on the morning show. But as we Mere once coincidence, as we once learned on this program, <laughs> uh, Eric revealed that he eventually uh, lost interest in her anyway because she's a smoker, and he is uh, he does not approve of that. So there you go. Yep, she lost her chance. That's right. Uh, Miriam Banish is a top fan in the chat room and says, hello. Hello, Miriam. And she says, uh, guess who I just saw in Bedford? Uh, I, I, I don't know who. Easy G? No, I, I don't think so. I think Easy G's home for now, home for the day. Puddles, pity oh, party. Oh, could be. Could be. I really like that now. Melanie La Liberty from the great state of Vermont says, breathe easy. You're supposed to... Uh, Break once in a while when speaking. Yeah, well, you know, he hates to complain, so he wants to hurry up and get it over with, I guess. Uh, Dan Ranvlet is a top fan in the chat room. Dan, of course, you can hear every Friday night on WMNH 95.3 on Retro Spectrum Radio with Paul E. C. from uh, 7.30 to 10 p.m. on Friday. I, along with Dan, we have the uh, honor and privilege of being uh, Paul's co-hosts on that show, along with our, uh, our friend DJ Steve, Stephen Light, who um, I think may be a a permanent uh, fourth mic on the show. I'm not sure. Oh. But uh, Dan says, referring to what Easy was talking about, this is an example of people's attitude these days. No one cares about others. I tell people I'm just visiting. This is obviously your world. (laughs) While people are... are, uh, Less considerate, I think, post pandemic. Yeah, I, I definitely see it. Yep. I see, I see it out on the road. The way people drive, people are much more aggressive. Seriously, uh, driving it's dangerous than they used to be a pedestrian. Be. Yeah, yeah, people are people are just much more aggressive than they uh, than they were. Uh, Dan says, "Let's hang up with Easy and find him to let him know he messed with the oh to find the guy uh, to let him know he messed with the entertainment report king." Yes. Or, or ga- oh, gang up. Let's gang up with Easy and find find that guy. That's right. Scott Robinson, who is undoubtedly Easy G's biggest fan, says Easy should have messaged me. Uh, would have gone right down there and taken him out. No one messes with Easy. That's right. Yes. Our Easy. Easy G. Uh, Mike Palapita says he needs to get in touch with Ryan Gorman so he can teach him how to use nunchucks. <laughs> <laughs> Miriam Banish says, my Emmy, age 21, doesn't look disabled at all, and I guess hides pain well, but has a connective tissue disorder, so standing and walking is hard. People are horrible. Emmy gets uh, grief for sitting in handicapped spots on the bus. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Yeah, that, can we talk about that? Yeah, we'll we'll come back to that. It's funny. It's never, never occurred to me, but yeah, there, there probably are people who, you know, because they don't look handicapped, but they are. You know, they sit where they're, you know, that's for them. But but people don't, people can't tell by looking at them and they get grief. 
Yep. I can I can see how that would happen. Yep. Scott Robinson says he should have uh, gone to the back of the bus with the cool kids. Oh, maybe I'll play Rosa Parks by Outcast at the break. They talked okay. about being on the back of the bus. Okay. Um, Tom Blanchard. I like <laughs> Tom is in the chat room. Says uh, that girl in the Subaru gave me the finger for going the speed limit. Well, if that girl in the Subaru is listening, I hope you're very proud of yourself. No bird flying. That's right. How uh, dare thee. My favorite thing, by the way, is when I'm driving and I'm going to make a turn and I've got my directional on and I'm turning and the person behind me lays on the horn because by me slowing down to turn, they're going to get to their destination an entire two or three seconds uh, <laughs> later than they would have otherwise. Yeah. And that is clearly infuriating to them. And that that's happening way more to me than it used to. So it, it's, yeah, people are much more aggressive. That's true. That's um, very true. Uh, Dan you can Le- imagine what it's like for her then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dan says, uh, easy on the verge of becoming a Karen. Oh, no, 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 no. Not our no, easy. No, I don't think that was Karen level. I think they were mostly valid. Oh, Melanie uh, <laughs> Melanie says, uh, uh, Tom Blanchard, yeah, sorry about that. I was having a bad day. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, Dan says uh, he should have treated that guy like he treats Amazon tablets. <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. A little, on it off. a little inside, a little inside for our newer listeners, but well played. <laughs> oh, Miriam says uh, she saw Christian Lacoste, also I known as DJ too. Reckless. Oh, she probably saw him at uh, you know because he works in Bedford. I probably so saw him because go. he lives with us. Oh yeah, I see him too sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he does live with us. That's right. That's a good point. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, let me give the numbers again, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. You can also text us at 617-917-4476. Tweet me at Matt Connerton or send an email to matt at mattconnerton.com. And, of course, you can interact in the Facebook live chat, but best thing to do is to call us at 603-250-6007. And you wanted to talk about uh, the debacle uh, <laughs> uh, you went through before uh, we came on the air today? You want to talk about that? We'll talk about that. That's why you've got we'll your... Uh, oh, yeah. by the way, Rocky right. Rocky Huber is asking, uh, did he have a neck tattoo? Is Christian the bad po- guy? Cri- no, Christian posted something about getting a neck tattoo. No. Which is a horrible idea because uh, if you have a neck tattoo... Uh, no offense to anyone who has one, but when I see someone with a neck tattoo, my assumption is that they're in a street gang. Nuh-uh. Yes, that's Not what I... Not if it's like a cute one on the back of the neck. That's different. Full front neck? That's... Di- that's yeah, yeah. yeah that, well, no, I know I know some people with full front necks that don't look like street gang. Yeah, it's... So do you. It, it, I, I know. I'm sort of kidding. You know who I'm thinking of? No, I actually don't. Who are Holly. you thinking of? Who? Holly. Holly oh. Brewer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She has a beautiful neck tattoo. It's actually rather tribal. It goes down her chin and everything. Yeah, yeah. But but I... And she doesn't look like street but, gang. But, but generally, when I see that, I, I, I assume... How dare you? I, I assume this is uh, this is an individual who's uh, not interested in any sort of uh, future employment. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, so you wanted to talk about... Uh, Oh my God! What, this what is happened? Insane. This is why you've got your papers out. It now, is it is not for an entertainment report. No, and actually, this took like an hour before show, and I I barely finished it before I almost had to leave because mm. it took so long. So basically, I back in June, everybody remember if you remember, I cut my hand, and it, I had to go get it like put back together. I was I thought maybe I might need stitches. But they were actually able to just clear it out, glue it together. Life was good. I had this really great female provider. And I had gone to the Elliott Urgent Care River's Edge. And it was great. Let me say, the care was absolutely great. They checked me right in. I was in and out of there in like 20 minutes. I go to leave, and the young lady says, oh, you have a $30 copay. Do you want to take care of that today? And I say, sure, and I give her this copay. So I get a bill today from Elliott Health System. For an additional copay of $40. What do you want another copay for? Well, they got a nice little racket going on here. So basically, you go to the Elliott Health System River's Edge and the urgent care, uh, they accept my insurance. It's a it's a AARP Medicare Advantage plan, uh, Walgreens. It's got like all those names in it. Um, but they're an accepting facility, right? Urgent care, great, go get covered. Well. Apparently, some doctor who I never saw, because it's a dude, um, who I probably, I guess, signed off my chart maybe, is not a covered provider under my health insurance. 
So you go into urgent care expecting that, you you know, this is a place that says sign on the wall, you know, it takes my insurance and co-pays paid. Oh, no, no. So because this guy is out of network, there's more money here. So they sent three bills to my insurance and they informed me that the $30 copay that I paid, they kept for the hospital charges, but there's an additional office copay for this doctor I never saw who is not who is considered an out of network provider in a in network provider building and facility where you can only see those providers no sign up says we don't take that or anything like that so now they're hitting me with more money and maddie you've been listening to this all day this isn't you know like you've been hearing all these explanations i've been getting through the insurance company like the lady looked everything up Mm -hmm. and 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 um it's 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 real trickery and here's the kicker the bill that they sent me, they want me to write the check out to Elliott Health Systems, not this doctor that didn't see me, but the bill they sent my insurance is in the name of this doctor, not Elliott Health Systems. Yeah. Explain this to me, please, how this is okay. As a patient, I have a right to know about my care, right? And in this instance, I had a right to choose where I would go. And I intentionally went to a less expensive place in urgent care and I did not need to take up room in an emergency department for a simple, you know, cut, put back together, clean it out, put it back together. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. it. You know, that's what we what we should do as people of like. I would, I hated when people would go to the ER for silly things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So this is where I am now. So now the insurance company is putting in a um, a uh, dispute for me. And the uh, and and the doctor whose name is on it never actually saw you, right? No, it was a physician's assistant who saw you. Yeah, so I had doctor, a female. Yeah. I had this really great female physician assistant who came in. And she's cleaning it out, and this is how cool she was. I'm sitting there, and I had steri stripped this thing together real quick, and I'm like, "Geez, I wish you could glue it." And she said she could, so I didn't even have to get sutured, no X-rays, just flush it out to get the the stuff that was in there from the, what the instrument that I cut it with, the knife I had cut it with, out. And then clean it out, steri strip it, glue it together, and I was on my way. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, what great service. This was awesome. In fact, they asked me when I walked through the door if I had an appointment. I said, I didn't know you could do that. And they said, yeah, you could even do that online if you want. I'm thinking, this is great. And then this happens. Oh, what a racket. What a money grab. Yeah. Um, Scott Robinson in the chat room says our health care sucks. People can't retire and enjoy our golden years because of the ridiculousness of health care. Uh, My mom lives in Massachusetts, which is the only state in the union that has its own medical mandate for insurance, Romney Care. Yeah. She pays $800 a month for health insurance. That's the best she can get off of their health exchange because it's way worse than what we have access to because Massachusetts did their own thing. They made it worse. That's how much money she pays a month. Yeah. Eight hundred dollars. Yeah. No, she can't retire. Um, yeah, it's uh, uh, so how did how did you leave all all of this? What, so what what's happening to, now? I have to write a formal letter and mail it, snail mail it to bat to with the claim numbers that the lady gave me. This lady spent like over an hour with me on the phone, this lady, Kathy, from the insurance company. She was amazing. Patience of a saint, she was amazing. And she looked everything up to be certain of what we were saying. Yeah. You know, so I have to write a snail mail letter, send that in. She filled out a dispute claim. And and, and for her, what she said, well, if you never even saw this doctor, what is this bill for? Because they have three bills from that day. They have two bills that appear to be from the hospital And then this third bill that just showed up, which is in this doctor's name that I have no idea who this guy is. Like I didn't, I'm not going to say his name on air or anything, but I never saw him. In fact, there was something that was kind of neat about the day. All the people I saw were women. The lady who checked me in, the nurse who took my vittles, the PA who came in and put my hand back together, even the lady that checked me out and took the copay. Everybody I had that day was female. And I I just, I just remember thinking that that was really kind of neat, you know? Not anything against guys. I love male providers too, but I just remember thinking it was neat that I had this really great, badass female crew take care of me. Because yeah. I'll say it again, they took excellent care of me. But this billing thing, 
this is not okay. This is so stealing in my book. I feel like this is bait and switch. They bait me into a facility that takes my insurance and they switch it on the back end and billing and don't even have the guts to tell me I'm going to get two different copays. Well, yeah, I've never, uh, it's like I said to you earlier, I've never heard of this uh, multiple copays on one yeah. visit. I've yeah. never heard of that before. You know, and you're in kind of the reward, you're incentivized as a patient to go to an urgent care center because it is going to be a lesser copay than the $90 ER copay mm -hmm. that most insurances have. You probably have like anywhere between 50 and 100 bucks for an ER copay. It's always supposed to be cheaper to go to urgent care. We encourage people to do that. You baited me to come into your facility by saying you take my insurance. Right. But you at no time gave me the option of even knowing that some dude who was going to sign off my chart from the PA who saw me, who didn't even see me, is going to bill me because he's not a part of my insurance, specifically him. Yeah. Um, when you were in the legislature, um, it, this this is something that used to come up uh, a, a number of times uh, on a, a show that I used to be a co-host on, on Channel 23, as you know. Um, but when, when you were in the New Hampshire State Legislature, it, were there any bills that came up about um, transparency and, and billing yes. and medical billing? Yes, and the bills that, that were before me that I had read when I was in, I voted in favor of. Yeah. Because it, you, you as a patient should have the right to know. It's like when you call a hospital, you have to have an MRI. And Doc says, well, there's this other MRI location. You should really call around because the hospital that you probably are near might be cheaper than the satellite or the satellite might be cheaper than the hospital, especially if it's like, say, Dartmouth, which is teaching hospitals, so things cost a bit more. But we as patients should have the right to know what services are going to be up front, unless, of course, it's a, you know Uber emergency, you know, your life's on the line. We don't care what insurance you have. We're going to try to save you, right? But when you literally bill yourself as this wonderful thing for people to go to, you should know up front that they're going to assign providers to review charts or whatever. Because this guy never saw me, so right. I don't know how he's billing. And it's specifically in his name with the insurance company. The bill that the hospital sent or urgent care sent me is from Elliott Health Systems. Yeah. The bill they sent to my health insurance is in this doctor's name specifically. Yeah, that's sketchy. And he specifically is an out of network. So there's yeah. been a lot of effort to try and get truth in it. But here's the problem. It's really hard because everything's different. If you've got insurance A and they made a deal with you, at, they're going to charge you 500 bucks for an MRI and you on this other person who walks into the hospital and doesn't have any insurance whatsoever he don't got a deal it might cost him a thousand dollars for that same mri but you have a right to know up front what those costs are going to be yeah. we do say that there's supposed to be transparency in billing there are bills that have been passed since i left since my departure that i do believe put more onus on healthcare companies to be honest and upfront with billing but that was part of the thing. When I actually, I didn't even tell you about calling Elliot. <laughs> I called this billing department to try and get this understood. And the person that was on the phone with me was absolutely the most ridiculous individual I've ever had the horror of having to speak to. He, he went so far as to tell me that I couldn't speak to anybody else because he was the supervisor. Oh, he When is, I went this far, honey, this is, is what I said. Law. I said, I would like an itemized bill. That's what I asked the man for. Mm -hmm. I said, I want an itemization of these bills so you can show me what you're charging. Because to me, it sounds insane to have two copays for one exam room, yep. for one treatment, and you leave. Like, that should be one copay. When I go to my doctor's office, I pay one copay. I go in the back, and he gives me my infusion treatment. Or he gives me my uh, ablation treatment. And when I walk back out, there isn't another copay. There are never right. two. Th there's, no, there's no two copays. Right. And I'm like, how do I have two copays? But this guy was really, he was so not nice and, and just so rude. And I, I started to get flustered, which we all know I have foggy brain. I do get flustered sometimes. And sometimes the mestinon's not working so great, not firing as easily. When I finally got so flustered, I said to the man, I want a patient advocate. He wouldn't even get me that. Yeah. And then I just, I got so lost in it. I hung up and ended up talking to my insurance company. And here we are filing a complaint, going through all of this trauma because they did a bait and switch.
Mm. This is a bait and switch. If I don't see, am I wrong? Am I going too far? But I feel like it is. I, uh, yeah, Dan Lavasser in the uh, Facebook live chat says, welcome to Elliott Healthcare. Dartmouth does the same stuff. Um, it, it seems like, um, you know, it, it's all, you know, healthcare billing is, is all very complicated. And it sounds like, uh, you know, there's going to be people within the system who figure out ways to take advantage of it to, to get more money out of patients. And Absolutely. It, it, this is what it sounds like to and me. And this is a provider who, in my opinion, is doing just that. I've always wondered why, um, as Americans, we don't demand. But I always, I've always wondered. But I also think I have an idea of what one of the answers might be. You know, I've always wondered why we as Americans don't demand more transparency in healthcare than what we get. But I, I suspect a big part of it is because there's such a large swath of the American public that look, if you're in a if you're in a full-time job with really good health insurance, you've probably um, never thought about transparency. Like when I w when I had, you know, before I was self-employed, when I had a full-time job, when I was working at Transworld and I, I had really good insurance, I never I never thought about, you know, I'd, I'd pay my copay. It yep. was really good insurance. You know, pay the copay and whatever. Uh, beyond that, whatever, you know, my insurance will cover it. And, I, you know... I, I'd never give it another thought, and I think that that probably is – well, of course that's the case for millions of Americans who have really good health care uh, coverage who, who don't have to think about it. So it's not – for most people, it's probably not until you're in a situation like the situation you found yourself in today where you do think about it and you go, actually, this is pretty messed up, and then you start you know, asking questions about it. And the thing about it is, is we don't have much of a voice because nobody really listens to us. We don't pay anybody's campaign. Yeah. The the medical industry is a huge industry, but there are a lot of lobbyists from a, every single company out there, and they spend a lot of money and a lot of time in legislator ears. The one I can tell you, my last term I served on Commerce, and it was the most heavily lobbied committee in the state house practically i mean like outside of outside of budgetary issues it is literally the the heaviest lobby there were always healthcare people workers in there you'd be surprised at things that verizon would jump in on like mm. there were always always overwhelming lobbyists they make a ton of money to make sure that they can keep making enough money for these providers and these hospitals yeah it's not your best interest sorry but it's not hi welcome to matt connerton unleashed who's this Hi, Matt. Hi, Jenny. This is Ron. Hey, Ron. Yeah, i got to ask you, um, I've come across this topic before, and it's been a long time, and I, I must have read about it in the newspaper or something, but what makes a doctor become out of network? I mean, they don't work for the hospital, they're subcontracted, or they self-employed. What makes a doctor out of the network? In the past, in my experience in the past, it's been your insurance company makes a deal with different doctors in different hospitals to provide service for a budgeted cost. And that's an in-doctor, an in-network provider. Say you wanted to see a provider that's in Boston at wherever, Faulkner or something, and your insurance doesn't have a deal with them, then that's out of network, which means you pay a lot more money. Instead of your normal just co-pays, then you're going to be paying 20% of the bill or 30% of the bill, whatever the percentage is. So what they've done in this situation is I'm getting a bill from the healthcare system that is in network, but it's being put under this doctor's name who didn't see me. And because he is not specifically contracted with my health insurance, he's out of network, thereby a higher cost and an additional fee. So they're playing, It's to me it's bait and switch. I get you to come into my store because everything out front says, welcome, I take everything you got, bring me your cards, bring me everything. And you get in there and you get your product and you check out, woohoo, I got it. You go home and you get a bill three months later for more. Because up front, they didn't tell you any of the secret stuff. Mm -hmm. So it makes me feel like there should be, maybe there needs to be a law passed that says that they have to tell you yeah. whether or not you're going to get a non-covered, non-network. But this is the thing that I, and I tell you, Ron, this is why I'm so confused about this too. I've never seen it like this. When doctors would bill separately, they'd be under their own group. 
not under the hospital. That would be a separate bill. You're told you're going to get a separate bill, whatever. But this is different. This is walking into an, an urgent care off hospital campus, an urgent care specifically for this type of service that is non, you know, hospital needed that you can have in a clinic. And, and they, they take the insurance for the clinic, but the provider that signs off the chat that you don't even see is not an accepting provider. So that means I pay the higher well, percentage. Well, let me ask you this. So if I went to urgent care and I said to them, listen, I, I, I want you to make me better, fix whatever I got, but I don't want a doctor that's out of network. Are they going to not be able to supply me with one or are they going to send really, me somewhere else? Seriously, that's a really good question. And I can't give you an honest answer because I'm finding all of this out after the fact. I had no idea. Yeah. So that's a really good question. It is. Maybe that's something we need to find. You know, maybe I mean, I'm personally going to do more investigation now as to where I should go if I need something done that where I'm going to go now. Now I don't want to go to that urgent care anymore because who knows how big the bill's going to guy going to make it next time is the cocaine going to be you know eighty dollars two hundred dollars who knows yeah but i guess we have to ask we mm. have to be proactive as as patients as as consumers and ask all of these questions and you're probably and you're going to ask somebody who doesn't know that's the thing they don't know this i worked in an er no i didn't know what doctor was where i, mean, I just knew where to give care yeah. If somebody asking me a question like that, I'd have to refer them to billing. Like, you're going to do that in the middle of an urgent care situation where the billing's closed. It's the weekend, which was the case with me. It was a Saturday. Yeah. So, Ron, I wish I had a better answer for you, honey, but I'm just as lost on it as you. <laughs> wow. What a topic. Oh, my God. Yeah. I would like to have anybody out there that's listening that's come into this problem, this dilemma, to call in and give their two cents. I'd love to hear it. I would too. Absolutely. I would like to know if this is more widespread. And I would like to know how many people have gotten blindsided like I did with this. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, guys. Thanks right. again. All right, Ron. Great call. Thank you. All right. Our friend Ron leaves us. That opens up a line for you. 603-250-6007. 6007 You can also text it. 617-917-4476. Uh, we do have another call. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hey, hey, Matt. This is uh, Stacy down in Nashville. Hey, Stacy, How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I wanted to weigh in on the topic you're talking about because um, a couple of things. I've always been outraged at the high cost of health care anyways. I mean, for things that sometimes we could do at a pharmacy, you know, a doctor or a hospital will charge astronomical fees. But that's, you know, that's one issue. But one thing more specific that would get to, like, a similar situation to Jenny is um, I used to uh, be a, a client over at a place here in Nashville called Greater Nashville Mental Health which is our community mental health center. And they have, um, they have a, they, they, their system over there is terrible. I mean, you'll, you'll wait like an hour into your doctor's appointment even to get called. Then you get called in and you have to go through your vital signs and then you sit down with the doctor for about five, maybe 10 minutes. But then when you get your CMS report from Medicare, it'll say they've billed you for an hour. And it's like, well, I only sat down with the provider for X amount of time. You know, how, how are they even eligible to charge for an hour's worth of time when they only sat down with the patient for about five or ten minutes? I mean, and, it's, and it shows it as the doctor's fee, not like the, the nurse's fee for the, you know, to do your, you know, the Not like the facility they, fee. It's not a facility fee. This is specifically the doc. Exactly. Yeah, see, that's not right. That's not right. No. You 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 and, with and me I've for always, less than fifteen minutes. I even minutes. reported that to uh, to um, the centers for Medicare and uh, Medicaid billing because that's that's like fraud on the government. Yeah, absolutely. See, that's what I'm wondering about. This is my policy is actually a Medicare Advantage policy, and mm -hmm. uh, I how can they like? Is my understanding of this was that. Medicare providers are Medicare providers. If the place isn't Medicare, you can't go there. 
they can't see you if they don't take Medicare, even with a Medicare Advantage plan, all falls under the same thing because they all operate under the same insurance laws and, and exactly. payment laws and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, as a state representative, I wouldn't mind, you know, looking into more of what's going on. I know you said there had been bills that have been filed since. I, I didn't see bills like that this time around. No, I think they um, were we a few years back. It. I think a few years back what's there was that? something about billing. But mm-hmm. that's another thing. When you ask for an itemized bill, they should give you an itemized bill. Not a hot time. They should give exactly. you the itemized bill. It's just like, you know, um, we have a similar situation here uh, in Nashua when it comes. It's totally different. But, you know, they, they people are fighting with getting the you know access to information under the right to know law. When you're a patient. That that should be one of those things that you have a right to know. And if you mm-hmm. want an itemized bill to see exactly, you know, where the the costs are coming from. Mm-hmm. I mean, as as a consumer, that should be a, a basic right because I want to know where my money's going. I mean, I'm currently on a medical leave from work, and my significant other is taking care of me for a little bit now. But the thing is, is if we're going to be spending that kind of money. For any number of things, I have a doctor's appointment coming up with a new doctor on the 2nd of August. I want to know where the money's going to because, you know, if there's something that I shouldn't be responsible for, like to me, uh, it should have been made known to you, Jenny, that another provider was going to be involved on your case that didn't participate in your insurance. Didn't it participate in my care even. This dude didn't even see me. Yeah. <laughs> This guy, exactly. This, That's the other thing. <laughs> didn't even produce a, my care, never mind my insurance, and I get a bill. And right? my insurance is paid so, out mean, of it already. Now they want more money. I totally, I totally am on your side with this because this is, uh, this goes on all the time. And like I said, I mean, it happens even with our community mental health center. And I've even brought it to the attention of the director, who they have like such a hard time ex- explaining it, and they have their political way of trying to make it sound good it mm-hmm. is like but <laughs> it just doesn't seem fair that you would charge for an hour's worth of the doctor's time when yeah. the doctor only sat with me for a few minutes you know yeah and so it's like i totally uh, get what you're saying jenny and then you know i'd like to hear some other things because this is a topic that should be talked about more well, you know he... the, the the untransparency in in medical billing this goes right to the heart of the whole problem though Healthcare is not a privilege. Healthcare mm-hmm. should be a right, which should a mean right. that everybody has access. But that's mm-hmm. not true. And these types of situations that this happens, and I'm sure that I'm not far from the only one, this is what gets people to not go. Like, I literally was like, well, maybe next time I'll just clean it out more myself and see if I can just fix mm-hmm. it. Like, I literally felt myself doing that. Mm. But but the, and that's what well, happens, and then people die because they didn't have access to the health care because they didn't have the money in their exactly. wallet. That that's not okay. Exactly. You know, it's interesting you mentioned that. One last thing, um, you know, I have um, a number of years ago, my uncle Peter passed away. He had liver cancer, and he was a guy who was on the rather big side, and he never liked to go to the doctor because the doctor would normally just say, "Oh, it's your weight, Pete. You got to lose some weight. You got to mm-hmm. lose some weight." And so when, you know, he got sick once, he just said, oh, the doctor's just going to yell at me about my weight and this, that, and the other. And he neglected to go. And then eventually he ended up getting put in the hospital. They did exploratory surgery, realized his liver was full of cancer. There was no saving him. And and this is this is a a sad reality that people avoid health care because of numerous reasons. Yeah, I, I can see that, though, too. Yeah, people avoiding health care because they don't want to deal with the nightmare of, uh, of billing and, and well, all that. Exactly, yeah. billing and other things. <sighs> yep. And yeah. they're, they're quick to throw it on your, health, on your uh, credit report, too. They have no problems with yeah, ruining yeah. your credit at all. Oh, yeah. I actually had well, a me, bill collector once tell me I shouldn't have made there. the bill if I couldn't have paid it, and it was an emergency room bill. Yeah. That, that actually happened in Kentucky. Yeah. Well, anyways, you guys, uh, I can't wait to hear if anyone else has any other uh, yeah, me situations. Too. But uh, this is a great topic, Jenny. Thanks for bringing this up. Thanks, son. You take care. Yeah, thank you for the call. Thank you. And you guys, you're welcome. Have a great day. All right, great Bye-bye. call. Thanks, Stacy. Bye-bye.
All right. Uh, that opens up a line for you, 603-250-6007. Uh, get in soon because we'll be going to break soon, 603-250-6007. Uh, some more comments in the uh, Facebook live chat. Tom Blanchard says, referring to that doctor who never actually saw you, uh, Tom said, uh, that sounds like he's trying to jump on the gravy train. <laughs> Yeah, right. Um, Chris Rose uh, points out uh, several healthcare facilities do this. There's always an out of network provider hiding somewhere on a bill. That's interesting. That's terrible. Uh, Dan Lavasser says, My PCP is a private practice. They have internal tabs and, oh, I'm sorry, internal labs and imaging, same day visits, uh, left big medical. Uh, Chris Rose says, God help you if you need surgery. Your hospital stay could be in network, but the anesthesiologist could be out of network or the lab tech, x-ray tech, any of them could be out of network. That's interesting. That's something that's never occurred to me. That can happen. He is right about that. Absolutely that can happen. Uh, Chris also says there's a surprise billing law coming on uh, the 1st of uh, 2022, January 1st, uh, which is supposed to give uh, patients more visibility into out-of-network billing. Is that federal or state? <clears throat> That's federal. That was something that, you know, credit where due. Uh, uh, Trump did sign that into law, uh, the uh, surprise uh, the surprise billing law. So that is uh, that will go into effect in January. Here it is, my great example. Trump also gave me right to try. The ability to access a medication that hasn't been approved for my specific ailment by the FDA. But that doesn't mean you have the right to get it. I had the right to try, but only if I had the money. And I do, and I pay for my infusions out of my own pocket because they're not covered. Yeah. So Trump gave me the right to try it, but not the ability to pay for it and access it. What in the world is good to if you've got that dangling in your face and you're some sick person who's living on you know nothing? And you don't, you can't pay over six hundred bucks, seven hundred bucks for your therapy. You're not getting it. You're just not going to get it. Too bad, too sad. Go home, die. I did pull up an article. Uh, this is from because it, it, you know it's relevant. This is from uh, KTF.org. Um, surprise medical bills, bills, new protections for consumers take effect in 2022. So just uh, you know, we won't go through the whole thing, but just to give you an idea. So in the closing days of 2020, Congress enacted. And the president signed into law, it's called the No Surprises Act, providing new federal consumer protections against surprise medical bills. The measure was included in the omnibus legislation funding the federal government for fiscal year 2021 and providing stimulus relief for the pandemic. Its enactment followed nearly two years of congressional debate over competing approaches to the problem, uh, to the problem that at times appeared to be deadlocked. The No Surprises Act contains uh, key protections to hold consumers harmless from the cost of unanticipated out-of-network medical bills. That Isn't sound... that what I just talked about? Yep. Yep. Surprise. So wait, as of the first of the year, that's illegal? What they just did to me is that as of the first of next year it, is it, illegal? It sounds like it. Yeah. Get out. Uh, surprise bills arise in emergencies when patients typically have little or no say in where they receive care. They also arise in non-emergencies when patients uh, at an in-network hospital or other facility receive care from ancillary providers Uh who are not in network and whom the patient did not choose. Wow. That's exactly. That's entirely me. Yep. So if if you didn't think this was illegal, see, and if you're somebody who's a Trump supporter, you got to thank him for this. I thank him for this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I no. thank him for right to try. At least I got access. But, you know, because I had the means to do it. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to kind of skip Oh, my skip God. Down. No, that's a great thing. you got to post that. So it gets into some more details. I'm going to skip this next paragraph because I want to get to this part. It says, uh, the new law takes effect for health uh, healthcare plans... Plan years beginning on or after January 1, 2022, and it applies to nearly all private health care plans offered by employers, um, as well as non-group health insurance policies offered through the uh, through and outside of the marketplace. The new law contains other related provisions, including a requirement for health care plans to keep network provider directories up to date. Um, yeah, seriously, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Because remember. One of the specialists I had a couple of years back, 
like practically overnight, the sign changed on their wall that they no longer took. And like, remember that? They switched it on us. We didn't even know. Yeah. Like we went there and it's like all of a sudden it changed. So, so wait a minute. So see, I want you to, you know what I'm going to do, Maddie? I'm going to include some of this in my letter that I'm going to send to the insurance company yeah. about how the law changes. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, the law doesn't change until January. What else does it do? Anything more? Although that what well, it's doing is it amazing. Gets, it, 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 this article, it, it's too much to get. I'll, I'll share it out on uh, on our Facebook page. It's too much to get into. It really kind of gets into the weeds on, on, now, on this stuff. But You did say private insurance. So I have to wonder, are Medicare products and Medicare insurance also inclusive in this new well, law? Well, that's the thing. Looking at this, I get the impression, no. So this may not. So actually, this may not apply I mean, it, it applies to people in similar situations who have private insurance, but in your case, um, it does not appear that it would. Wow. It would not, see, that's wrong. I don't see anything here having anything to do with Medicare. And most of us, these people around my age that are on it, are on it for not great reasons. They're on yeah. it because they have no choice and they have like an incurable. Yeah. So you're going to hit them even harder. Right. Right. It's, it's insanity. You got to add this stuff up. The doctor business, the medication, the, all those costs. You spend, I, I spend 90% of my money just staying alive. I did just share that article out to the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page for anyone who wants to see it. It goes into, you know, a lot of detail. Uh, I still think I want to include information because I still yeah. think it matters. And I think we as a state should be looking at this as well. Yeah. Can we follow suit and apply it in some other way? I don't know. We can't fix anything on Medicare, but we can at least do something. See, I don't even know if that would work. Would it apply? I don't think that it would apply to employers who are self-insured. And there are a number of those in our state. Oh, of course. Uh, Tom Blanchard I mean, uh, says uh, regarding the billing, you know, they just see a, like, like what Stacy was talking about. They just see if you're a few minutes charge you for an hour. Tom says it's like the mechanic who charges, you know, one hour for a procedure who, when he gets it done in 10 minutes. But that's do lawyers do that, too, or do they charge by the quarter hour? Uh, lawyers, depending on the lawyer, some round some of them up. probably round some up, of them yeah. round up and some <laughs> of them are will do like quarter hour or half hour. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, uh, let's see, we'll grab one more call before we go to break. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hey, Matt, Ryan, one more time. Hey, Ryan. Yeah, I just got done with the lawyer, and I guess I, I'm satisfied, even though I know I got raked. It was, the guy, it's 315 bucks an hour, and then that's for the first hour, and then after that, it is every 15 minutes. Oh. But um, I had a question, and I'm not even sure if this question is right or wrong, but I know that the hospitals were losing money and, uh, you know, to, enough to where they were ready to close the door or closing their doors. Now, did the government bail out these hospitals for any of that? There hasn't been any know. of that locally here that I'm aware of. I mean, like, there, there's no hospitals here that... I know there was a some occasional problems that might have been happening with like Franklin Hospital or something, but they, yeah. they got bought by Concord. Concord's absorbed them. Yeah. We haven't had that issue here. The only place I ever really remember hearing about closures were more on the border hospitals. Hmm. Yeah. See, yeah I didn't have enough information to, for myself to uh, ask the question, but somewhere in the back of my head, I remember hearing that uh, hospitals were losing money, and I don't know if it had to do with Corona or whatever it was. And oh no, no, I know what he's talking about now. He's talking about when, when, when COVID first happened, and the government and the government was trying to shut things down and whatnot. Hospitals, knowing that they were going to get this massive influx of patients, stopped doing elective procedures. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's their bread and butter in most, you know. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah. Is now that you're kind talking. That's what it was. So they were losing money on that. I do believe there was some some fiscal dollars available for the healthcare system because of the COVID. But I don't know if anybody shut down. It's possible. Hmm. It's absolutely possible. I only know that in our state, to my knowledge, none of our hospitals shut down. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, thanks again. All right, Ron. Great question. Thank you. Uh, by the way, uh, Chris just uh, posted in the chat room, Chris Rose, Medicare may not be a part of this, the, the new law. 
because they often have an established negotiated rate. Also, too. But then again, there's that rate that's still not telling you up front you're going to get charged for some dude you didn't even see. Yeah, yeah. Also, um, you know, you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, uh, these insurance companies, they have these, um, you know, they negotiate these rates with hospitals and providers and whatnot. Um, that's that's why I, I always point that out when we talk about, um, you know, how some people will say, and I, I and I agree in principle that you should be able to buy health insurance across state lines and whatnot. So Absolutely. You can, and and I, I agree with that in principle, but but it's not the panacea that people think it is. It's not that easy. For that for for the reason you mentioned about the negotiated rates earlier, and then uh, Chris brings it up as far Plus as Medicare. Plus the laws but, are different state to state. Right, right. But just to clarify for people who don't know what we mean. So you'll often hear people talk about, well, you should be able to buy, you know, it should be like car insurance. You should be able to go online and just, you know, buy it across state lines, get a policy from any state that will apply in your state. But the reason it's not that simple and it's not uh, the, the fix, the easy fix that so many people think it is, is because these insurance companies have established relationships with hospitals, with healthcare providers. So, yeah, maybe, sure, you could buy a uh, 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 an insurance policy at a rate that you like from another state, but that doesn't mean that anybody in your state uh, is going to be in the network of this policy Correct. from another state. So exactly. it doesn't really well, fix the problem. But what we tried... It can help. Years ago, we tried to do something where we tried to say if the federal government would pass a bill that it would allow for the crossing of health care insurances. And three New England states, including New Hampshire wanted to form kind of like a, their own little co-op, right? You guys, we can all have access to each other's insurance, but they all have to meet the guidelines of each individual state. So if you have a policy from Vermont, it would work in New Hampshire under this bill, and it would have um, it would have also said that that policy was agreeing to follow state laws. Doesn't mean about the negotiation with bills. So yes, that does get a little bit more tricky, but... On the surface, that would have worked nicely if we could have done it, but we ha we would have to have more of the same laws. Every state is so different with their laws on what has to be covered for insurance and what doesn't have to be covered for insurance. On top of all of the federal regulations, that it's 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 it sounded great. We wanted to try and do something like that, but couldn't do it. Couldn't we, make it work. We have a call. We'll grab this. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Matt, Jenny, one more time. I swear I won't bug you again. But That's listen, okay. You're not bugging. I remember something that I saw on 60 Minutes a long time ago. And, God, if I could only remember enough to provide you the great, you know, the facts. But there was one particular hospital that's so large, they're monopolizing. They're buying out other hospitals. So they're controlling the rates. Mm. Are you familiar with this case or the situation? I can understand where it's coming from, but not the specific situation. But I can see how that would happen. Ah, shucks. The, I was hoping that uh, you guys like could fill me in. Because, yeah, it was just, there was a conglomerate, conglomerate and uh, he's able to buy out other hospitals so we can control, you know, the, control the market. Maybe we need a... Uh... All right, another day, another time. I was hoping <laughs> you knew a little bit about that one. All right, Ron, thanks for the call. Maybe we, I mean, are, are there antitrust laws uh, specifically for healthcare? Maybe there, maybe there should be. I don't know. In, in certain ways, what? Well, yes, but in certain ways, no. Like in, uh, especially like in New Hampshire, a doctor can't try and sell you this product. That's a, like he can't try and get you on a a, a must have like say PT comment uh, product that he wants you to have to help you walk better. That maybe there's another product that's a little less. They can't just, like, dole out their only thing now. They can't, like, create something and then, like, dole it out. Does that make sense? Yeah. But, yeah, uh, no, the, I don't think that there's anything specifically that inhibits hospitals from being able to buy other hospitals. But those, I'm pretty positive that those things do have to be approved by some kind of, a by the hospital, by the government. I don't think they can just do it on the, you know, on their own. I think they have to have approval for it. But like, say, Beth Israel is a really big hospital located primarily in Boston. That's their original site. And now they have hospitals all over the place. And the hospital I used to work with in uh, Plymouth, Massachusetts, it was called Jordan Hospital, is now a Beth Israel hospital. Uh, you know, Concord Hospital here in Concord now owns 
Lakes Region. It's not Lakes Region anymore. It's Concord Hospital Laconia. Um, Chris Rose, by the way, points out in the chat room, uh, the surprise billing portion can be even worse than what Jenny experienced. An out-of-network doctor could charge $1,000 for services. The insurance company could have a negotiated rate of 600 and the doctor can bill the patient the remaining 400 directly. Exactly. Jesus. Thank you for that example. That was that's that's exactly right. Maybe we do need sing, single payer in this country. <laughs> you know, you know, I used to not think that was a good idea, but I do now. I, I actually do now because yeah. when I went to Friesland, when I went to the Netherlands, I saw a healthcare system working that everybody had access to. Every single person there had access to it. Everybody carries insurance. Actually, they carry more insurance than we do. They carry third-party insurance. So if you hit somebody else with your bicycle, they, that insurance kicks in. Like they have, you have to have personal insurance, not just healthcare. But here, I could go to one hospital and the MRI is five hundred. I go to another place and the MRI is a thousand, and nobody tells me the difference. And I'm eighty years old. You know, nobody's helping that person, and that's why we need the transparency. And that's why mm-hmm. maybe we do need to go to single payer because I feel like that's the only way everybody's going to get the same healthcare. My mom is a two times cancer survivor. She had breast cancer twice. And she can't get reasonable health care. It's $800 in Massachusetts for health insurance. That's insane. That's so much money. But here in New Hampshire, I can get a policy that's 150 maybe. Yeah. But because she lives in Massachusetts under a different regulation, she's literally screwed. Yeah, it's incredible. She can't even get access to the same doctors that I can because of it. Yeah. Because of it. And, and it, it's horrible because you should be able to get the same treatment. I should be able to get a really good doctor and it shouldn't matter which insurance. I should have access to this doctor. It, it, single payer, I think, is the only thing that's ever going to happen that would ensure that everybody had access to health care. I never used to be in favor of it. I never thought it was a good idea, but I do now. I do now. Well, we are uh, we are well past the top of the hour, so let's take a quick break. We'll uh, play something and then uh, show some love to our wonderful sponsors so we can pay the bills. And then we'll be back with our number two, Matt Connerton Unleashed. We are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3. Don't go away. Matt Connerton, all he had to do was say, I'll talk to you tomorrow. We'll make an appointment and I will help you the best way I can. And if I can't help you, I'll try to find you help. Welcome back, everybody. We are way in hour number two, numero dos of Matt Connerton Unleashed. And we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on Comcast 97 if you're in Manchester. Streaming at WMNHradio.org and on the Facebook on the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page. And, of course, you can go to my website, mattconnerton.com, for all of your live streaming options, social media links, contact info, show archives, et cetera, et cetera. Hello to our friends at Raw Talk Online. Uh, today is Monday, July 26, 2021, and Jenny is here as well at the news desk. I am, but I think that Crazy Joe's on to something. I think we need to change your name. He said Calmington. Yeah. See, like you're the hypnotherapist, right? You're calm. Oh, yes. See where I'm going there? See where I'm going? Yes. Yeah, well, I got out of my news. Well, See that? That rolls around in your head a little. That's right. And I'm not saying that in a derogatory way. <laughs> and I'm not saying <laughs> that in a bad way. Oh, we know. We know. Yes. He's not being derogatory. Derogatory, yes. Derogatory. <laughs> To gang up on me. No, no, we would never. No, but I, you know, it is true. You know, I, I work as a hypnotherapist, and I can be very calming and very, uh, I can uh, bring you into a state of deep relaxation where you feel very deeply relaxed, you peaceful, know, and calm. I love it when you talk to me that way. Well, I should, actually, I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't do that, though, on the uh, radio because no. uh, someone will be, well, someone will be driving and they'll, uh, you know, uh, fall asleep or something. That would be bad. No, yes, that would be bad. That would very be bad. very, very bad. Yes. 
I still can't believe years ago I did that on a morning radio show. I actually did a live uh, hypnotherapy session with, a, uh, with a, uh, a host, and it was like, uh, I, I can't even, the, the lack of judgment uh, on both my part and the part of the host. So now I did. You were uh, young and then. I did. Uh, I mean, I, it's one thing to do that on television. For example, geez, it's been like almost a decade now when I uh, hypnotized Norm on his uh, program. And Norm he still and doesn't smoke. And he still doesn't smoke. That's no, right. No, that's right. But uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about what I do, uh, go to my website, mattconnerton.com, and you can uh, contact me. We can set up a consultation. We can set up a session. Uh, you know, because of the pandemic, it kind of forced me to uh, figure out how to do that online, you know, just like uh, so many medical providers, which I'm not. I'm not a medical provider, obviously, but uh, medical providers and and, uh, people in mental health had to uh, figure out uh, ways to do that using, for example, I use a service called doxy.me. Um, which I, I learned about from one of your providers. And, I love uh, it. And, yeah, it's, it's great. It's private. It's easy. I can just sign my name in, yep. and she can see me, that I'm right there in the waiting room. And then when she's ready, she just tag pulls me right in. Yep. yep. I love it. I love it. I didn't think I was going to like doing stuff that way, but I actually do love it because I can stay in my pajamas and have my coffee, and I don't have to go yeah. anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, and for me, too, for what I do, um, the, the most important thing is that the uh, client is in a comfortable environment where they feel very safe and secure and so forth. So actually, that's kind of what's ironic about me not realizing sooner that that was a really good, viable way to do hypnotherapy sessions because, um, you know, it, it, it actually makes sense. You know, they get to be home in, their, in, in the environment that they're yeah. most comfortable in. And uh, put the headphones on, and yep. and and we get online and uh, and talk them through it that way. So you can even have your little kitty next to you, you're petting while you're listening. That's right. That's right. Which I do. I do hypno when I'm when I like to listen to hypnosis. I I have my little. I have my kitties. Yes. And they curl up with me. Yes, absolutely. And I actually get calmer and feel even easier. It's even easier for me to get into that relaxed state just mm-hmm. because I have my little fur baby with me. Yes. <laughs> Sounds cuckoo, but yo, it really works for me. It really does. Yes, absolutely. I do want to remind you all, of course, we are proudly sponsored by The Hop Knot. Don't go there today because Monday and Tuesday is their weekend, but they're open Wednesday through Sunday. Uh, they have uh, gourmet pretzels, which are fantastic. They have an assortment of craft beers. Uh, every Friday night, our friend Grant Lampton plays their live from 7 to 9 p.m. Yep, they yep, have yep. Sunday brunch. They have their gender blender events that's such a fun, that's fun to say. Uh, which Sunday are, brunches are really fun, too, because they have all the breakfast foods. Yeah. You know, in a special, it's a special Sunday menu, and you can do, like, the mimosas in a can. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. Absolutely. It's such a, a wonderful uh, a family that owns and operates it, uh, and we're very honored and, pri- and privileged to have them as a sponsor. I'm tripping on my words because I was thinking about, uh, you know, uh, Crazy Joe. He uh, refers to the hopknot as the, uh, the hobnobbin. <laughs> because well he has a speech impediment you know he a hobnobbin he can't say truth he pronounces it truth and he uh and he can't say uh hopnot he pronounces it well, uh, hobnobbin i don't think you're right you you, you really got to go there oh he's got a speech impediment impediment <laughs> that's not why he does that he screws up the names of stuff and people on purpose he calls you Fatso Ratso. That's his new uh, name That's for me. That's your name yes. for you, Fatso yeah. Ratso. Yes. New I'm not going to say the, the one he uses for me. Um, but I, I think we've, uh, I think we've uh, probably heard the last from from Crazy Joe because this time, he came back with uh, more new videos. I was hoping for some, maybe some original material, maybe some new insults. Yeah, well, no. I, I guess calling me Fatso Ratso was new. I'm not even uh, overweight, which is funny. I, I probably weigh what about 180. Like yeah. I'm not even a big guy, but he's uh, he's for very, whatever reason he's obsessed with your weight. He's very fixated on my weight. Maybe I just do I look fat on camera? No. I don't know. I mean, I, any I, one of us looks fat. It's I'm me because I am a, fat. I'm I got like the I'm, fat like going I'm not here. A, I'm not You're a, not a big guy. I'm not a heavy dude. So no. I don't know. But uh, anyway, that um, was, I'm, yeah, no. Um, but he also says a lot of things that are racist yes. and are horrible. And he started right back into that again. Yeah. With his descriptions of um, 
people of color yeah that i ain't gonna repeat so so this time he got suspended he came back with uh he managed to get up a couple videos and he appears to have been suspended again pretty much immediately so um he i went he had some uh homophobic he, comments in yeah. his last video that i saw yeah so i wouldn't be surprised if that's why he's yet again off as he puts it face crap so this time he didn't even last a, a, he what a Was couple days a day? yeah like couple two days, days maybe couple days not even two full days i don't think so we think uh we think crazy joe may have run out what's the expression run out his string no he's not he's on tiktok now Oh, but he's a frustrated because they only do like three minute <laughs> videos. So if you look up his Twitter, his TikTok account, there's like Jesus. there's all these videos loading three minutes apiece. That's so right. So three minutes apiece. Those New Hampshire people, you know, like all just video after video about people of New Hampshire that are nothing and. You're the fat so rat so, and I can't repeat what he says about me because that would be against FCC regulations, and I don't talk that way. TikTok probably is a good platform for him, though, in the sense that I mean that's where all the seventy year old dudes go to create content. They is go to it? they go to TikTok. Oh yeah. I didn't even. I have like oh. I know kids kind of use it. Oh but yeah. No. I had to like, look when somebody said he did a TikTok. Like I think it was him that said he did a TikTok. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's that's where you go if you're like. Uh, uh, a washed up never was a uh, 70 year old man you go to tiktok and uh, you'll he'll be a star in no time how many three minute videos does it take to hit star quality like is there a level oh for like, him ding ding you hit 100 like does that i work? don't know or i don't know how like it a works. thousand videos at the rate that he can produce <laughs> three yeah. minute content that's yeah. the same broken wheel going around he could he could hit those limits, yeah. I, I'm sure he can uh, fit some racial uh, <laughs> epithets and uh, homo homophobic slurs into uh, into three minutes. Uh, yeah, I I really don't get into TikTok personally, me personally. Yeah, it's just not my thing. No, me neither. Um, but I had to look, and yeah, sure enough, there he is. Oh, so you found him on there? I did. Yo, I actually went to TikTok and found him. So does he have videos? He up? has videos on TikTok. Oh, he does. He does have videos on TikTok, Matzo Ratzo. How many? Yes. How many did you see? There might have been ten. Really? There was a decent amount. Like recent? Yeah. Oh. There was a recent amount. Yeah, because he had nowhere else to go yeah. to, to record his banter yeah. like he does. So he went to the only thing he could think of, and it was TikTok, apparently. Wow. But they only give him three minutes at a time, so he doesn't get very far. Wow. Um, uh, yeah, uh, he's continuing with his nastiness over there. Wow. I don't know that TikTok has the same reporting I, 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 system that Facebook or, or does. Yeah. Well, at least we have virtual crazy Joe. You know, I I, 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 always, I I do I do feel a little bit badly. You know, if only I had helped him. All I had to do was help him. And uh, and well, and, you know how much money you you're know. making off of him, don't you? But now he's now he's all now he's relegated to TikTok. Matt, this is on you for not having the patience and not having the dignity. No, that's it's it's on me. I, if only I had had the patience and the dignity. If you could have gotten up and walked away from the live mic, mm -hmm. you could have made an appointment that, with them, Maddie. That's right. Why wouldn't you make an appointment I with just, them, Maddie? I, I should have made an appointment with oh, them. You're yeah. so mean. I know. Here I am trying to have a reasonable conversation with you, buddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, buddy boy. Uh, Easy G does that Bucko. too. Sometimes he'll say, "Buddy, I just want to just uh, make I sure like we don't get in first. trouble." Yeah, that was uh, you said uh, Bucko with a B. Yes, that's my make, mom's word. Make, make my sure mom that, doesn't talk like that either. Want to make sure no, everyone bucko. knows what you said. You're like, hey, Bucko. Right. It's just yeah. Like, I don't want anyone to. Have, I like that word. I don't want anyone to have misheard that, and and then I get in what trouble. What do you think I said? You no, have to no, tell me later. no. I know what I I I know what you said. I just want to make sure that no one misheard it. No, but I can't figure out what you're mishearing it into. <laughs> well, this, you could. I'm running words no, over I'll, here, I'll, and I'm. Tell you afterward. Uh, Dirk Don says, "Good, let Joe stay on TikTok. I hate that site." <laughs> wow. No, I think he's going to be very successful there. Absolutely. Yeah. He's got the website all set up. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. No content, but a great looking website. He had said, and so he pays for it. He had said something the other day in one of his uh, new videos that uh, he was going to challenge me on Wednesday. He's he's supposed to be calling into this show on Wednesday to challenge me to. 
do something online. But now that he's uh, suspended again from uh, live streaming on Facebook, I don't know what he's going to challenge me to do. No, but wait. I, last video I heard, he said he was going to challenge you on Tuesday, and I figured he didn't have the guts to call in today because he knew that I'm here on Monday. I thought I um I thought he said Wednesday. He said Tuesday. Either way, it no. certainly wasn't the first of the week. Well, why did he skip Monday, Maddie? Why do you think he's scared? Well, uh, do you think I bother him? I I think uh, that may be the case. Yes, do I, I will treat feathers? Jenny like a woman until she acts like a woman. Mm hmm. Wow. And what is that definition there, bucko, about mm. how a woman acts? Would you define that for me? And what kind of woman? Are we talking about a cis woman, a trans woman, a fluid woman? I, what, what are we, where are we going? Pregnant woman, a menopausal woman? Like, we come in all shapes and sizes, honey. Mm. I didn't say one bad thing about Matt today, except that he didn't help me, and I was trying to be reasonable. By the way, uh, tomorrow on the show, uh, we'll be joined in the second hour for our weekly Tweakonomics segment with yeah. the great Mike Sutterth. Uh, Mike, also known as Grant Lampton, who, uh, of course, uh, uh, performs uh, Friday nights at the Hop Knot. But on Tuesdays, he's Mike Sutterth. He is Clark Kent on Tuesdays, not Superman. He's like all and, uh, math smart and stuff. Yes. And I can't keep up. Yeah, he'll be... Uh, <laughs> Well, actually, ironically, no, I I'm he, only kidding. he says he's uh, not good at math, but but his uh, specialty is in economics. That's what he was educated in. And uh, the theory of economics is not necessary is not mathematics. It's mm, economics. What right. makes it move? Bull, right. blah, you know, all those right, marketing right. things. Yeah. Fancy words. Yep. Yep. And he's very, very uh, informative. And we have great conversations. We've been getting a lot of very positive feedback. We had a really to those great segments. conversation about the gas prices last week and how mm -hmm. the inflation is affecting United States across the board. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I think absolutely. He, yeah, he'll probably talk more about that too. Oh, Dirk Don uh, from uh, our friends at Arrogant Media, or Dirk Don is our friend at Arrogant Media, I should say, says, LOL, I called for people to report Joe's stream on Friday. Well, mission accomplished, Dirk. It looks like. <laughs> very good, man. Good, oh, man. Very good. That's true. Because if you look, it's not just a, it's, it's not just a Saturday video. It's his Friday videos that's gone too. I just thought about that. He's right. His Friday videos. The are Friday gone? video was gone too. Oh, the last time I looked. Because the, the, last time I looked, there, there were a couple of them was. up. I knew something had happened because yesterday I received a notification that uh, you know <laughs> I, uh, the, uh, on uh, on my phone on on the Facebook app. I received a notification that he had gone live. <laughs> So, but I wasn't able to go to his stream right at the moment. So then I went a little bit later. It Well, actually the notification disappeared. And then, uh, so then I, I went to his page and there was no video. There yeah. was no new video. Imagine and I was that. Like, I was like, oh, he must have got, gotten booted again already. Yep. In record time. Yep. Yep, he did. Poor Joe. Couldn't happen to a nicer, you know. Well. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you I mean if you're gonna get on there and start downing everybody based on their sexual orientation, mm -hmm. their religious, their their ethnicity, I mean, there's really not much that he leaves untouched. This is between men. This is between men. Oh, virtual this crazy Joe. Uh, <laughs> doesn't like you chiming in there. Ah, you know, bite me. Well, we do have a little <laughs> bit of time left. I wanna I wanna try to get to um uh, something that Mike Doyle had uh, sent to me in an email. But uh, let me give the numbers, uh, 603-250-6007, if you'd like to join us live, 603-250-6007. Uh, you can also text us at 617-917-4476. Tweet me at Matt Connerton or send an email to Matt at MattConnerton.com. And Mike Doyle had sent me an email about um, uh, fentanyl uh, seizure, uh, seizures at the uh, U.S. southern border uh, have been rising. And... Um, the, this uh, this report, actually, he sent me several different links, but the most recent one is from NBC News from uh, the end of June, uh, talking about uh, just, uh, we'll look at this uh, quickly, uh, federal agents uh, in a uh, particular section of the border says uh, they've seen a staggering 4,000% increase in fentanyl seizures over the last three years. Uh, those busts are not at ports of entry. Where most smuggled drugs are typically found, the Border Patrol says the rising amount of fentanyl is being found in the desert transported by increasingly brazen smugglers 
who are exploiting stretched federal resources. In 2018, the Border Patrol in the El Paso sector found just one pound of fentanyl outside ports of entry. In 2019, two pounds. In 2020, nine pounds. Um, so this is, uh, you know, and it goes on with a lot of uh, numbers and um, and uh, uh, data. But, um, you know, we can kind of sum it up because we are running short on time as uh, the, the fentanyl uh, coming into the country is, is really uh, increasing quite a bit. And, um, you know, we've talked about on the show, you know, the, it, it kind of um, the, the fentanyl in the country, which is a problem, and, and it's coming in from China as well. But, you know, it, it's uh, the media likes to cast it under the banner of the quote unquote opioid crisis. But we've talked a lot on the show uh, over the past couple of years. And we've talked with with some great guests like Red Law and, yep. and uh, Dr. No. Who I, I yeah. think I think what was a doctor know who said, you know, uh, they mislabel it. It's not an opioid crisis. It's I'm not a, sure if it was him that said that or Red. Okay, but it's I I thought but maybe he did talk maybe about they it. both did, but but it's it's not a an opioid crisis. Right. It is a fentanyl crisis specifically. Absolutely. Because when they miscast it as an opioid crisis, then it leads to politicians making terrible laws which restrict doctors from being able to prescribe what their pain patients need, yep. which leads to pain patients committing suicide and all right. this stuff. So they need to get it right. It's, it's, it's not, a fentanyl crisis exactly. and that what, is no, I think what Dr. Noah is also t- saying is that it's not his patients. It's not the, 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 the chronically ill, incurable patient who probably meals out their own pills to themselves to get them to last longer. I know people that do that with their insulin, too. That's what chronically ill people do. They try and get everything to last. Like my compression, I try and get it to last. Same thing with meds. It's not that that's caused our problem. And it's not just the southern border. Mm -hmm. It's all our borders. We have had an increase of fentanyl coming into our country. Everywhere. Yeah. It is... It's the drug dealer's prime thing now. They mm-hmm. make more money off of it. They get you addicted faster to it. And that's where we're having, and that's where the overdoses come in. They're fentanyl. And some of the fentanyl that's coming into the country now is so friggin' pure that they're giving to people. They don't even, they're killing their, their customers and they yeah. don't care. They don't care. They're going for the big buck. Yeah. And I, in part, I like to point out the fact that he sent you an article that specifically mentions the last three years. So this isn't a Democrat or Republican problem. This is an American problem Mm -hmm. that we need to address, and we don't address it right. It's really easy to go pass a law and blame a patient. It's really hard to get to the real crux of the issue, the criminals, the nasty people that are the sludges of society that make this crap, this meth and fentanyl and mix it together and stuff and are killing our people and killing our kids. Yeah. And, you know, I, uh, I oppose, I, I, I should clarify this. And I, I think, you know, I, I've had a couple of conversations on air with Mike about it when he's called in. And I think sometimes maybe he has misunderstood my position somewhat and, and others may have as well. So it's always good to clarify it. You know, I oppose the drug war. And uh, I would like to do something similar to the Portugal model. Um, but but that doesn't mean, you know, decriminalizing everything is not the same as making it OK to, you know, it's not saying just let it into the country. Um, I don't uh, that I don't support. And uh, and I do support uh, efforts to uh, keep illegal fentanyl illicit. from coming into the country. Yeah, Big absolutely. Big difference from illicit fentanyl to the pill that the doctor might get. Right, right, exactly. Yes, an important distinction. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hey, Matt. Uh, Jenny, one more time. Jenny, yeah. I, heard th- I thought I heard you say that um, you suffer from depression? No. No, that's no, I have, okay, thought I, I heard have, you say that. I have Either CPTSD. Way. The reason I was saying is... Um, I was experiencing some pretty, you know, powerful depression, and my doctor just hooked me up with a drug that's not narcotic, not addictive. You can get off it any day you want without having to wean down. And the first day I took the pill, and I took this wicked, it's a very small dosage, actually. The first day I took it, I noticed a diff- an unbelievable difference. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a miracle drug. I wish everybody in the country that was on could be on it. Well, it- not so fast. I, I love you, buddy, and it might work great for you, but not for everybody. 
So we, we got, yeah. you know, there's no miracle pill out there. I wish there was. I mean, if we could put Prozac in the water and it made everybody better, I might be behind that. But unfortunately, in medicine, everything has got to be individual, individual patient based. What, what Can you tell us what it is, Ron, that you're on? Yeah, sure. Um, it's got a big name. And then it, and the generic form of it or the common name is uh, Lexapro. Okay. okay. Yep. Heard yeah, of I've that. heard of that. It's very good for some people. Very good for yeah, some people. Yeah, uh, like like night and day. Um, yep. You know, just lifted the weight off my shoulders, and it and you don't get high, no, not in any way, shape, or form. It's just uh, I can't explain it. It is it, 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 it involves the right part of the brain that has to do with mood, and um, you know, like I say you don't get high, not yeah, addictive. I think it's a mood stabilizer. Over, you know, so it's the greatest thing in the world. I I I don't know how long I'll stay on it for. But for right now, it works great. Excellent. Well, well, good. I'm glad it's working for you, Ron. That's excellent. Good for you. All righty, buddy. All right, Ron. Take care. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. No, I, uh, maybe he had us confused. You know, I struggle with depression. I've never been on any uh, medication for it, but, you know, that that's, you know, the choice that I've made. But, but I'm glad that that's working for him. But you make choices that are healthier for yourself. Like, you do your own hypnosis and, yeah, and other things. It's not, you know, try to not, not it, trying but... to say that we're trying to manage anything outside of what works in medicine. And sometimes medicine doesn't mean you have to take a pill. You just have to make some lifestyle lifestyle changes. Right. Having said that, though, I would never discourage anyone from, uh, you know, if, if they're uh, getting Absolutely. medication under the care of a doctor like Ron is. I mean, if, if taking that Lexapro is working for him, that's fantastic. I would encourage him to keep doing it. As is um, now, the medications I'm on are for the rest of my life. As is now, Maddie, the medication you're on for asthma is for the rest of your life. This is something that you need to maintain your health. Maybe. Maybe. If I can, you know, if, if you I can... You think you can reverse it? Well, you can. Uh, some people, if I can uh, if I can lose maybe five or six pounds and just keep oh, it off. Out. No, I might be able to. No, I, I, you don't need to lose any weight. Well, not according to Crazy Joe. You've heard what he uh, says about me. He says I'm, uh, you know, a fatso ratso, isn't it? Uh, and I reason. I say nothing but the truth and so help me God. But I could. I, I've, uh, I've I've done the research, and yeah, as, as some people with asthma, if they, you know, if they drop a little bit of weight, sometimes they can kind of, uh, you know, get everything uh, realigned. I, I mean, you know, I yeah, put, no, I know if I lose some weight, I would feel better. Well, I mean, I just, I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Would it work? But it's. It's uh, it's possible. It doesn't hurt to try as long as you're not going too far. I remember uh, uh, Jesse P.S., uh, the day that uh, he called the show and we had one of the times and we were uh, we were talking about uh, the vaccines with him. And he mentioned that he had had asthma when he was younger and then it went yeah. away. But we never got a chance to really get into, into how it went away. But I wonder well, I wonder if he was childhood heavier. asthma can go away with age. Yeah. But even you can have an allergy. And a decade later, you no longer have that allergy. Yeah, that that happens. It, it does, you know. But usually, adult onset a little harder. A little I still, harder. I, yeah, I still think I had. I, I think I had COVID, COVID, and it damaged, I think you do too. damaged my lungs. I, I, I really do too. I yeah. really do think that too. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. But we are fully vaccinated, and we are at least safe in the knowledge that we will not get critically ill should we be exposed. Uh, Mike Doyle sent another email too, kind of related because it, it deals with the border, but I'm going to save that for another day because it's a big topic. But something that has been in the news regarding being vaccinated is, uh, you know, obviously the uh, coronavirus actually is raging in some parts of the country because of the unvaccinated. And there's, Vegas. A, there's a lot of uh, discussion about bringing back mask mandates. Yep. I don't know. I don't know what is there any point though because it seems to me you know I don't think we should have necessarily gotten rid of it. I mean we well, still have our kiddos can't be vaccinated. Why aren't we protecting our kids? I don't understand why we're going to send kids back to school and we're not going to keep the same social I want social distancing. I want them wearing masks. I want them being protected. They're kiddos. I think I think we gave up on them a little too soon. I just don't know though at this point that's the trouble at to, this point well to try to well to, to, to try to reintroduce them the the anti-vaxxers ideologically are the same people who are going to ignore 
They're anti-maskers, too. Exactly. It's the same people. The anti-vaxxers and the, the anti-maskers, it's the same group of people. Exactly. So what, I, I don't know, because there's a big push. You know, there's, there's talk about states reintroducing it, uh, although uh, some, of, some of the Republican governors who, are, who like to downplay COVID, like uh, Ron DeSantis in Florida, for example, he said, no way we're, are we having a mask mandate. But, um, but, but some states are considering it. Uh, there's talk about, you know, should uh, the president, um, you know, federally ask for what, what did he call? He didn't call it a mandate before, did he? What did he call it? 90 days. I'm, something. I'm not exactly maybe, sure. Maybe he did call it a mandate. But I don't but, think it's going to work. Yeah. Coming back, people are people were. Have you I mean, look at the news. All the airlines are reporting massive increases in in problems on the airlines oh, yeah. and all the times they're having to turn around and there are always people that don't want to wear the mask like you knew when you bought the ticket yep they want you to wear a mask on the plane yep. the la- one i just saw rec- like yesterday was a woman waited until they started taxiing away to go on the air uh, to go to the ramp to fly off she must have thought i can get away with it now and she took it off and she started yelling at him and everything yep. and the pilot turned that plane right back around took it right back to the gate and they took her off but there is so much of that going on right now how are you going to get these same? You're not going. It's not going to happen. Right. It's not right. going to happen. It's yeah. not going to happen. The, the fools. The fools. Ah, oh, the fools. The fools that will listen to politicians before science. It kills me. It kills me. Yeah. But here's my thing. How come they're anti? Why are they like that when they were Trump supporters? It's Trump's vaccine. Bottom line, vaccine came out onto his watch. Yeah. He helped it come out, and I'm going to say that because that's true. Well, it's it's like the the cognitive dissonance of these people. It's like I say at CPAC recently. So you had you had speakers getting up, like Lauren Boebert, for example, getting up, mocking the vaccine, talking about how we, uh, you know, the Biden administration couldn't hit the deadline of July uh, July fourth to get, you know, 70% of the country vaccinated. And people are cheering for that. People in that room are actually cheering for the failure to get people vaccinated because apparently the Republican Party is the pro-COVID party. But then in that same room, Trump gets up to give his presentation and he's taking credit for Operation Warp Speed, rightfully so, but he's taking credit for Operation Warp Speed and getting the the vaccinations. Exactly. uh, uh, Getting the vaccines kick-started. And and they're cheering for that. And it's and, like they don't like like these think, are two these are two diametrically opposed concepts here to be anti vaccine, but to also praise their great messiah, their Lord and Savior, Donald Trump, for Operation Warp Speed to facilitate the vaccines. And but, somebody explained something to me. I want a Trump supporter to explain this to me. I watched the man as president of the United States go on national television and get a shot put in his arm. Was it fake? Was it not real? Was it not mm. really a vaccine? Like, seriously, was he faking it? Who? Was who? Trump. Fake? Was Trump faking it to get a vaccine? He got vaccinated. His kids got vaccinated. So yeah. he says. So he says. Well, yeah. So is he A, faking it, and it was nothing? He didn't really get vaccinated. He got saline or something. Or B, did he really get vaccinated? And if he did, why are you having a problem yeah. with the vaccine yeah. that he took and gave to probably gave to his own kid? I'm sure Barron's had it. Well, it's like I've been saying. Uh, I I think this is I'll I I said it the other day I'll I'll say it again I have not that I want to help him I don't ever want to see him as president again but I have what I think would be an effective potential re-election strategy because I I do believe he is the presumptive nominee in 2024 there's no way he's not running and there's Agreed. and there's no way he won't be the nominee and we'll end up seeing a rematch of uh, Trump versus Biden or Trump versus uh, Kamala but um. But I really believe if he did this, if he went on a on a serious media blitz, just went on every show that'll have him, and he's a former president, who's going to say no and say, please, I really, really want everyone to get vaccinated. If he did that, and then he could turn around, because then every Republican in the country would get vaccinated. Daddy wants us to get the shot. Okay, we've heard him say it. Now we're going to get the shot. And then he could take credit for getting everyone vaccinated. Yep. It would work. It would work. Oh, up! Oh, whoever that was hung up. But seriously, yeah. he's he's up there telling it this is his vaccine, right? This yeah. was done on his watch. He does get to take the credit for it. mRNA vaccine at that, something that's been working on for science for a long time, never had it happen. Now here we go. Yeah. 
And he's, you know, he's taking the vaccine. His kid's taking the vaccine. His wife's gotten the vaccine. Yeah. But you're not going to take it because it's not a real vaccine. It's a pedophile ploy to sterilize the nation. Well, either that or it, uh, it, it, it installs a tracking device so that uh, Bill Gates can uh, keep track of where you are so then George Soros can come to your house and kidnap you. I don't know. Whatever, uh, whatever these people think. You know what's but- really interesting about it? When you go to other countries and listen to their conspiracy people, they just insert other words. Like yeah. <laughs> they do. Like the queen would do this. They insert a different word and they go the same way. And they claim the same thing, different people, different country, different laws, different everything. Yeah. But it's there. We have time for uh, one more quick call before we wrap up. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hi, Matt. This is Brandon from uh, Portland, Maine again. Brandon from Portland, Maine. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. I just wanted to piggyback off what you guys were just talking about. Uh, I think Donald Trump's strategy in uh, his reelection will be he'll continue pounding this culture war. Uh, cancel. He'll continue claiming that cancel culture is, uh, you know, uh, is a sin in our nation is terrible, and he'll continue to narrow his party's electorate as a result because mm-hmm. the moderate Republicans, the few that remain, uh, will continue to be ostracized. Yep. Yeah, I I think that's a great point. You know, it, it's funny. I've I've been saying on the show too for a while. You look at you talk about shrinking his electorate. I remember a time when the Republican Party talked about wanting to be a big tent party. You know, they had room for everybody, and we don't always have to agree on everything. We just want you in the tent. The Eighty twenty rule. Yeah, but now it's like they're a small tent party. They uh, unless you're a hundred percent on board with Trump, they don't want you, and and they're actually trying to drive people out of the party and make the party smaller. But I think they're banking on as long as the party is enthusiastic enough for Trump, say, you know, 75 million of them, that maybe that'll be enough to uh, to carry the day in the future. I don't know. But I I think you're uh, I agree with what you're saying, though, Brandon. Absolutely. Well, and it all I mean, Republicans were moderate all the way up until around George H.W. Bush. You, You saw in the 90s, they started this abortion, the culture war started to take a fold in the Republican Party. Mm hmm. And, and that's how they were able to sort of win all these Appalachian places that used to vote Democratic is uh, they started voting more on cultural issues rather than economic issues or pocketbook issues. I think you're absolutely right. Um, in fact, well, George H.W. Bush, you know, he wasn't, yeah, he wasn't really a, a, a culture war guy, kind of a moderate guy. But then his son, George W. Bush, an evangelical right. from Texas, really kind of fit that mold of, of where they were going with that. Um, and uh, and they once they went in that direction, they never looked back. I think you're right, Brandon. Absolutely. I think that's a great observation. Well, uh, have a nice day, and thanks for taking my call. All right, thanks for the call. Take care. Great call. Absolutely. Yeah, I think he's right. I, I yeah. think I think he nailed it as far as the the trajectory of the uh, of the Republican Party. Um, and now, of course, it's Trump's party. Yep. It's it's very much one hundred percent Trump's party. And I think what he said that you know Trump will campaign on, I think, is correct. Also, you know, the critical race theory stuff and all of that. Trump will go. Uh, all in on on all of that, and I do believe. I mean, I mean, you know, barring um, some legal trouble. I mean, he's got a lot of legal trouble, but uh, barring the legal trouble uh, becoming an impediment to his becoming the nominee, and um, and and barring any health issues, I I do believe he is the nominee in twenty twenty four. I, I don't think he's got Giuliani for a pres- for for a lawyer anymore because he no. lost his privileges in New York. Right. He can't. He he lost his board. I think uh, I, I think it'll be Trump. This is my prediction. Of course, one of the fun things about, you know, it, it's just fun to make predictions in politics. I'm probably wrong. But I think it'll be Trump and DeSantis will be his running mate, Ron DeSantis in Florida. Oh, yeah. He's definitely not going to keep Pence in there because, no. they, you know, as far as he's concerned, he's a traitor now. Right. That's like, right. The, the, well, one I'm, of, like, the like big-time patriotic dudes is now not a patriot anymore. He's a treasonist. That's right. Well, hey, they wanted to hang him on January 6th. Yeah, they did. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> All Brought right. the rope and everything. Oh, yeah. His political career is over. But, uh, Jenny, thank you. Thank you to uh, all the great callers today, everybody in the Facebook live chat. We got to go. If you miss any part of today's show, it'll be up in just a little bit at WMNHradio.org and at MattConnerton.com. Don't forget Mike Sutterth will be here for his Sweekonomics segment.
Tournament tomorrow. And uh, that's going to do it for us for now. Yep, we got to go. I will uh, talk at you all a little bit later. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.